All right. Well, thank you again to everybody that's uh, joining, and thank you to Rumsey. Uh, my name is Aaron Brown from Illuminations. I'm going to um, talk a little bit about uh, lighting controls, uh, wired, wired, and some wireless solutions, um, specifically how they can help uh, you, your customers, your contractors, contractors, and end users specifically too. We're going to talk about acuity controls. Um, under the Uncuity umbrella, uh, we see many, many different control solutions, some of which you might recognize, uh, some of which are um, new and that you might not. Um, the ones that we're going to focus on specifically are the digital uh, NLight and NLight Air wireless systems um, and how they integrate a little bit with uh, Distec Controls, which is a building automation company also uh, owned by Acuity. So why am I? Um, it's one digital lighting controls platform uh, for the specifier. Um, it brings up code compliance, um, allows an easy way to um, communicate with the automation system, um, and um, also reduce our energy um, and give us some advanced networking capabilities. Uh, for the contractor, um, we can see anything from a small local wired system um, to a large building integration system. Um, it's easy for a contractor to install um, and will bring your cost down on a project. And then for the building owner or for the end user, um, the system is designed to create energy efficient spaces. So therefore we're gonna save money um, and also give you um, the ability to make changes in the future, um, tweak and readjust and move on um, as your building needs change. So here's a basic overview. Um, of kind of the entire system. Um, we're gonna deep dive a little bit into one or two parts of it. Um, all right, so um, a very basic end light zone um, consists of a switch, a power pack, and a light fixture. We're gonna run Cat5 from our switch to our power pack, and then we are gonna wire out from our power pack to the luminaire itself. Again, very, very basic and we can scale now we've added a second switch, a second zone or power pack, and we've added an occupancy sensor. Again, we are cat fiving between our power packs, um, our occupancy sensor, and our switches, and we are running regular power out from our power pack out to our light fixture. Essentially, what we've done is we've distributed our controls. So we've taken what used to be a relay panel in a closet, and we've moved it out into the space. We are distributing our relays out into the space for easier wiring and easier configuration. And taking a step further is enabling a fixture, and light enabling a fixture, um, where basically we are integrating all of that control right into the light fixture itself. So the basic and light enabled zone, we've removed that power pack. We are bringing power straight to the fixture, no dimming wires, nothing else and from our switch. Now that switch, now that fixture is dimmable, um, it can turn on and off and dim right from our wall switch. Getting a little bit deeper into that, um, we can add our occupancy control. Again, we can network our fixtures. We're just daisy chaining them with Cat5. Um, and we have the ability to now individually address these fixtures. So switch one controls fixtures one and two. Uh, switch two controls fixture three and so on and so forth and we'll get a little bit deeper in a little bit as to how this can really work to your advantage and then we can go like i said even deeper um, we add into backbone devices uh, this is a an example of a, of a hallway with six um, classrooms or six offices um, we've created a little zone in each one of these each one of these offices or classrooms and we have essentially a bridge or a route that's out in the hallway um, where we can pass information upstream and downstream from there. So again, this is tying this all back in and just creating a nice little network. Get even bigger. Uh, now we've added a backbone device, our, our Eclipse module here, our, um, and we can now network multiple buildings, multiple um, spaces um, across an entire platform and across an entire campus. Um, and we've created schedules as well. We can show floor plans of our buildings. 
um, and different profiles. So it's, it's um, very scalable from something as small as one room, one switch, one light fixture, all the way up to a building-wide or campus-wide system. That little black box. Um, the main features that you know are important for, for a contractor or for a building owner to know is this gives us our astronomical time clock, um, our ability to add schedules, preset themes, different profiles based on time of day, um, and also gives us our BACnet interface. So now we are able with a building automation system. The BAS can listen to our sensors, it can write some data as well. Um, and that's included for free with our uh, with our sensor view software too, which is also free um, with this uh, basically Eclipse backbone device. It does also give us the ability to do some energy monitoring um, that goes a little bit in depth, which I'm I'm not going to talk about today. But if somebody has a specific question, uh, they can feel free to to reach out to me on that. So. Okay, that was the wired system. What's next? Um, and we've been, it's not really next, it's been out for a while. Uh, now the ability to do this all wirelessly. So using that same basic feature, we are now communicating wirelessly. We're not running Cat5 between our devices. Um, we are not connecting with Cat5. We are doing it from an iPhone to commission our light fixtures over Bluetooth and then a radio frequency between our fixtures. So, um, it's the same foundation that we had before, um, you know, with, with billions of square feet already installed, we've now just changed our method of communication to lower our installed cost. as well so and we can we're taking basically the same steps that we were taking before where we can see a small system basically a small room we put a new light fixture in it's embedded with this wireless technology it's a wireless beacon and it's communicating with all the other fixtures in the space again commission just from an iphone we don't need a router, we don't need a gateway, we don't need to sit on a building network. This does not interfere with, with other systems in the building. 900 megahertz, you know, a radio frequency. And I wanna go back. Again, this is, it's scale, but we can start with one small room with one wireless dimmer and six light fixtures, and we can decide that we wanna expand from there. Next month, we could do another room and so on and so forth. And then we decide a year from now that we want to come back in and just add a backbone device with the clips and network them all together. And maybe we can add some profiles. So this is something that is completely scalable for a building owner as money becomes available, or we can go in from the beginning and create a complete system right from the startup. And this kind of explains that a little bit more you know, how we're using a combination of different devices to do that. We bring in our little wireless Eclipse with our wireless antenna, and we're done. Um, what is very interesting about what we're actually you see, you know, this purple little GM, the group monitor. Um, this is something I've learned in commissioning systems myself. Um, each individual light fixture might have, it might be a wireless beacon, might be communicating with the rest. But when you're commissioning, when you're doing a startup, when you're communicating out, only one light fixture um, needs to have communication back to the, basically back to the home run. And so that group monitor is getting data from a phone, uh, an Eclipse device or an iPad, anything else like that, and sending it out to all the others in the space. So that's where we really have an advantage too, where if the space becomes an issue, we need one that's close enough and then we can kind of branch out from there and adapt as a beacon to broadcast to all of the others. Specifically the end user. Um, Acuity has done a lot of research and on average, they're 40% energy saving um, by upgrading 
their existing systems to an LED system with integrated wireless controls. Um, the largest energy savings are specifically in warehouses. Um, they advertise 82. We've seen as high as 89 or 90 um, if you have um, skylights or anything else. Um, and, I, and I'll go into what is in that sensor that can really cut down on that cost. Um, but again, you know, in, a, in an office space, um, we're seeing over 60% of an energy reduction. Manufacturing, you know, easy 30, 30 to 40. And a lot of those manufacturing spaces have manufacturing plus warehouse. Um, so there's a, a huge ability to um, cut down costs of energy specifically and create a really good payback. Um, you know, for your, on, on your rebate bills. Um, also, this will bring you up to code. So um, a lot of the different codes, you know, they vary from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Um, we are required to have daylighting zones, which we can accomplish within this. Uh, plug load controls, again, we can also accomplish with this. Um, Group to occupancy and some local and global dimming, which we can do with, with more backbone devices. Um, and then outdoors, um, our photo control, you know, dust to dawn light fixtures, we're seeing more and more where townships are requiring dimming after a certain time of night and then shut off at midnight. Um, and then, you know, with some, some occupancy based controls as well. So we can start with standalone system right out of the box. The fixtures do what they're supposed to. Um, out of the box, the fixtures are going to dim and they're going to work based on the occupancy sensor that's already in that light fixture. And then we can add on to it and we can go from there. And that's how we can really broaden out and build out our space. You know, the, the breadth of the application. So when we talk about the MLight wired system, we were referring to a recessed fixture or a pendant mount fixture with a Cat5 cable going between them. Um, with a wireless system, we can branch out to a recessed fixture, a downlight, a trough, or a pendant fixture, a strip fixture, your high bays that go in your gymnasium, or your warehouse, and then into your parking lots and parking garages as well. So all of this technology can tie back in together, including your exterior site lighting just by putting an N-Light Air device on a fixture. With our embedded controls, we're taking essentially three pieces. We have a light fixture, an occupancy sensor, and we have a power pack, and we're converting them into one. This one fixture, the advantage that Acuity does have is a lighting fixture and lighting controls manufacturer is out of the box this fixture has a sensor, a main module, and a photo cell. And it is all ready to go. So you've cut that you've cut down on your cost for components um, and your installation cost as well. You think of this for a retrofit or a new um, or new construction application, all you need is power going to this light fixture. It's 120 through 277 volts. We don't need to run dimming wires. We don't need to worry about surge suppression on any of our other devices or an AC to DC conversion like you normally see going from a power pack to an occupancy center. Let's talk a little bit about um, how this works, you know, the overall experience for, for, for an end user. Right now, like a parking lot, for example, or even your high bays in your, in your warehouse, um, fixtures are on at 100%. Dust to dawn on, on the exterior. Um, we have a time clock somewhere or a master photo cell that's turning them on. They are not turning off until it's bright enough outside. What we can do with an embedded occupancy sensor right on this Wilsonia light fixture, is we see these dips where we set our highs and our lows. We set our highs that when the space is occupied, we will be at 100%. When it's unoccupied, we're gonna dip down to 30%. So we'll continue to see these dips roll throughout the night. And now we've seen a big reduction in our energy and obviously a savings on our utility bill as well. Um, maybe we are running a 100 watt LED area light at only 30 watts for most of the night. 
um, and we're still hitting all of our light levels that we need to when the space is occupied. An example of, of what I want to show comparing a standalone sensor to ideally grouping our sensors. We're going to show these as cars. You can think of these as cars outside in a parking garage and in a, in a, um, in a uh, parking lot. Or we can also think, that, think of this as a forklift um, or a person even walking down an aisle. Um, as a standalone, you think, you think of your warehouse right now, you look up and you see an occupancy sensor on every fixture. As the person travels through the aisle, the light fixture turns on as you get underneath it. And then the next fixture turns on as you get underneath it, and so on and so forth. That could work fine for walking. Um, but at the end of the aisle, you don't know what's there. It's essentially dark. Um, the other thing is, is if you're a, a car or a uh, forklift, you might, your headlights or your forklift itself might be out driving the sensor. So we might be completely underneath that light fixture or almost getting to our next fixture, depending on where the sensor is, before the light actually turns on. So with our in light air sensors, same concept, however, they're communicating with each other without any backbone devices, just by their radio frequency between them, um, where that car drives underneath that first light fixture and it turns on the entire row, or it turns on half of the row until we get part way down and then the next part of the row turns off. So with the traditional standalone sensor, A, you don't get that, the some of those timeouts, typically it's a dip switch that you have to go up to that sensor, you need a lift, you need a ladder, you have to either push the button on the side of it or you have to flip your dip switches and, and play around in order to get um, to really adjust your timeouts. Um, with our wireless and light air system, it's just a click of a button right on your iPhone um, where we can change those timeouts. So let's take the example of you, you drive down an aisle, um, when motion is detected, we go up to 100%. And then after, we want to be really aggressive. We want to have some great energy savings because we know that forklifts are just coming in and out, not very frequently in this aisle. So after two minutes of nobody being in there, fixtures, all fixtures in the aisle dim back down to 20 or 30%. So we have a little bit of a glow for safety reasons, but our lights aren't on at full brightness. Um, and again, we're getting really aggressive where typically, if you look at a, a fluorescent fixture, they were coming standard with a 15 or 20 minute timeout. The fixtures were going off incrementally and it was about 15 to 20 minutes before that happened. Again, that kind of shows <laughs> what, we, what we're looking to accomplish. What, what that really is giving us an advantage to, like I said, is, is the middle of the night. We are seeing more and more townships. There, there was one in New Hope, Solbury, that I did recently, um, where the township is requiring after a certain time of night or after you know, no occupancy, um, the fixtures have to dim down to 10%. And then they that's very hard to do with a, a traditional time clock, but it's very easy to do with our end light air enabled sensors. Um, this was a retrofit application and we had lights dimmed down after two hours. Uh, we had them dimmed down to 10%. So there was just a nice little glow like you see in the picture on the right. Um, and a nice little glow in the lot. And then after another 30 minutes, they could turn off completely. And that will satisfy your township requirements. Um, and then they had a master photo cell too, just to turn them off um, when, it, when it was morning. About the devices itself and give an example of, of where see these fixtures. This is kind of just what I mentioned before. We can see that we can put them on architectural fixtures, recessed, pendant, downlights, perimeter fixtures. We can put them on our lower cost, the regular old flat panel, uh, a low cost BLT center basket, and a retrofit kit. Um, we can create any of the, we can put any of these sensors on a fixture and now make it a wireless beacon that includes the, the dimming the occupancy and the photo cell. Industrial side, uh, we have versions of these sensors and IP65. Um, so we can, we can, they can be in a wet location. They can be in a freezer. Uh, we can use them in parking garages, um, some food processing as well. 
um, and then just a regular you know, manufacturing um, or a warehouse um, too. Uh, these are showing the different types of sensors that we actually put in our fixtures. Again, this is more just for information. Um, I'd say the best thing for this is if you speak to your, your rep at Rumsey, um, they can help you specifically find the right application, the right product for your application. Um, and they, you know, they can work with me on that, or you can reach out to me and I can help you with that too. Uh, but it, basically a different device for every different type of fixture. These are what some of our switches and dimmers look like. Which is we can offer so and we can we can customize our buttons so button button one can be an all on button four can be an all off button two in a conference room can turn on our down lights to 50 percent and our nice staple fixture over the table to be at 100 percent and button three can do the opposite of that um so again it's not just a it's not just an all on all off dimming we, we do have some themes um that we can run with battery-powered ceiling sensor. Um, we request more and more, um, and we've got a 10-year battery life on all these, um, and it will integrate right into the same uh, N-Light Air network that our fixtures are already sitting on. And uh, lastly, we have the ability to um, control emergency and work with uh, on an emergency system. So this is our ER or EM version. Um, if you have a generator or if you have a uh, transmission um, inverter, any way that you are doing it, we can do emergency as well, um, where we're sensing the normal emergency power. And we can essentially, this becomes a, a relay with a UL924 shunt in it, so we can meet code as well. I kind of turn it back to Nicole, um, see if we have any questions. Um, I know there might have been things I touched on that were quick so if we want to go deeper into anything um you know or if you have any specific applications like i said you can feel free to reach out to your uh your rep at rumsey and um we can get together separately to talk about any specific applications 